Hi everybody, my name is Rebecca Bell. I work here at Old Steerbridge Village in the curatorial department as the collections manager and curator of textiles. And today we're going to talk about one of my favorite uh, types of objects, which are spinning wheels. At the Village, we have a wonderful collection of spinning wheels, quite a few, um, of various types and designs, and also a lot of spinning related equipment like clock reels and yarn winders and umbrella swifts and the like. This particular wheel is a really interesting one for us for a few reasons. It is a very typical style, sometimes called a great wheel, walking wheel, or wool wheel. And as you can see, the great wheel gets its name for a very obvious reason. The basics behind it are this is entirely driving the spindle, which is the, the pointy end there. So this wheel drives a drive band to the accelerating head here, which has an additional gear and a drive band leading down to the spindle. So that means when I turn this big wheel, I'm actually turning the spindle. And this is where the actual spinning is happening. At the tip of the spindle here is where the twist is occurring in the fiber that you're spinning. So as you are turning the wheel, you're gently guiding and pulling out the roving as the twist is going up. And you can get back a good ways until you run out of arm span. And at that point, you will reverse the wheel, which reverses the action of the spindle and actually draws the yarn back up onto the spindle. So you're storing the yarn that you're spinning here and spinning just off of the tip of the spindle. So turn it in one direction, draw it back. And when you've reached your limit, turn it the opposite direction and draw it forward, back and forward. So it's actually a very rhythmic, very relaxing activity. The thing that makes this spinning wheel very interesting is the miner's head accelerating head on the end here. Previous to this, uh, the direct drive or bat head would have been in place, and that means that this belt would have gone directly to that spindle and driven the spindle directly. And every time I turn this wheel once around, that direct drive would turn the spindle about 30 times or so. With the addition of the miner's head accelerator and the extra gear, that changes the ratio. So every time I turn this wheel once around, I'm now turning the spindle close to 100 times, so it really triples the efficiency from the, uh, the bat head, the earlier design. And I should say here too, that this type of wheel, it goes back to the early 1400s in Europe, but the art of spinning goes back much, much further, thousands and thousands of years, starting with folks who are using things like hand spindles or drop spindles. So this design starts showing up in the 1400s. It migrates, of course, obviously to New England, um, but by our time period in the early 19th century, fewer and fewer people are using these spinning wheels. And that has to do with the fact that there are a lot of factories. The Industrial Revolution is taking place not only over in England and Europe, but here in the United States as well. So for a lot of folks, they're finding that it's much easier to purchase factory-made yarns rather than using a spinning wheel themselves. You do find people still using them. Uh, if they are farming, they have access to the sheep and the wool and they have access to the equipment and the knowledge of how to use it. So you might find some folks still hanging on to this art, whereas others might have simply put the spinning wheel and relegated it up to an unused corner of the attic or garret. So that uh, is an interesting um, kind of transition that's happening now in the early 19th century. I will say another interesting thing about this particular spinning wheel that's a little different from the other spinning wheels that we have in our collection is the tensioning mechanism down here, which is done with a series of uh, sawtooth ratchets there to move this whole post either a little bit forward or a little bit back, depending on your needs and the weather. As anybody who has any wooden things in their house, including doors and windows knows, wood is very susceptible to uh, humidity changes and temperature changes. And the wheel is definitely no different. So as the weather gets drier, the wood's going to contract and this whole mechanism is going to loosen up to the point where it might be so loose that the drive band actually slips off on you. And at that point, you need to tighten it a little bit by moving this post forward. And in the summer months or humid weather, you might find that this wheel uh, band is so tight that it's actually seizing up, at which point you need to back the tension off a little bit by moving that post back and getting the proper tension on that wheel so that you can move it smoothly not too loose, not too tight, but just right. So this tensioning mechanism was uh, an interesting find for us because it is a little bit different from other tensioning mechanisms that we have uh, on other spinning wheels in our collection. So this is really a fun piece of equipment to use. And uh, if anybody has uh, any curiosity, we do in our Fenno house have somebody um, periodically using a spinning wheel, much like this one, a reproduction great wheel in the parlor of the Fenno house. <laughs>